We're talking to Mark Sermon, the executive director of Mozilla, which I think most people know from, from Firefox. So I know that you've done something very recently uh, with, uh, with Drumbeat and that Mozilla is doing things other than Firefox. Why don't you, you tell folks ab about that and, and how, what that has to do with the education world? Right, great. Thanks, Howard. So, as you said, Mozilla is really trying to reach out beyond Firefox. I mean, why we do Firefox is to keep the web open and, and guard the free and open nature of the internet. But we believe that we need to do more than just to make a browser. We need to get everybody involved in that cause. And that means reaching out to people around their own passion and seeing how that passion kind of connects back into the future of the web. And when we set out to, to do that, to look beyond Firefox, we created an initiative called Drumbeat. And we looked around and said, who, who kind of looks like us? Who kind of looks like the people who make Firefox, who looks like Mozilla? And we found an awesome group of people in the world of open, open learning and open education. We said, those people are trying to innovate in their world. They're trying to make education more free, more open, more tied to the, the digital society we're building. And they're trying to do it in a way that takes in a lot of open source principles. And so we said, that's a, one of the first groups we should work with. And so we, we started that by organizing an event recently in Barcelona called Learning Freedom in the Web. That was the first drumbeat festival. And it was exactly about what it sounds like. We took people who are radical innovators in the world of learning and creative technologists on the web, and we pushed them together around the, th the theme of freedom and openness. And it was just you know, an awesome event, not just because you know, the energy was you know, just sparks flying everywhere and these kind of people from different worlds being creative together, but also because they came out with ideas that moving forward will take the best of the web world, the best of the world that Mozilla works in, and the best of people innovating in education, and move them forward to advance both causes. And I'll just give you one example. There's a, a project called Hackasaurus, and it's about basically creating um, you know, a, a learning language on top of the web or out of the web using the web itself as something like Logo or Scratch, where kids can come and play and learn logic, but not in a sandbox environment, but with the web itself being a set of Lego that they can play with and move around. And if it actually comes true, if the people who met in Barcelona who hacked this idea can make it possible, it could be a dramatic revolution for learning. You know, some of the other stuff that came out of this was really amazing ideas about alternative accreditation and alternative assessment, you know, and, and we're going to use those as a way not just to disrupt how power works in the world of education and learning and give more people access to, to interesting opportunities for learning and proving their skills, but we're going to tie that back to themes like web development where Mozilla is really strong and you know, use the fact that we can attract a lot of people who want to learn a particular skill into this really cool open education experiment. So you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to do more of. We'll probably go beyond learning. Uh, moving into things like media or science and other places where we see crazy radical innovators like us and mash them up with people from the world of the web. Um, it's pretty exciting and, and certainly the people in the, in the DML world are amongst our favorites to play with and we're happy we're, uh, we're now dancing together. Alternative assessment immediately piques my interest since like, like many people in the DML world, I'm, I'm involved in, I guess for lack of a better term, student-centric learning more or peer learning in, in, in which there's less of me telling them and and more right. of them learning together but traditional assessment sort of turns that sour in right and one of the awesome things is that you know in a lot of ways the open source world has been doing alternative assessment for a long time you know if you want to get your code checked into firefox or any other project like that your peers review it we've got peer review of code at the, at the core of how we work and if you go to something like Stack Overflow, where people learn various different technical skills, a lot of it is peer support and also kind of peer validation and moving up in your credibility based on what you've offered as, as support for each other. So we want to systematically look at how you learn from that and take it into the mainstream of assessment. And you know, we're working with a bunch of people from the DML world uh, to do exactly that. Wonderful. I, I, I hope that the, the, the folks in the education world will be able to pay a little attention to what's coming out of the, the learning world in terms of assessment, since assessment really ought to be a learning tool and, uh, and really isn't uh, in, in terms of the, the way students approach it. It's something to be feared uh, rather than something to, to have fun with. Well, I hope five years from now that won't be the case. 
So what kind of other things, uh, you, you talk about the open web, and we, we just had this today ruling on net neutrality. What, what other kinds of things in regard to the open web is, do you foresee Mozilla uh, doing? Well, I think that there's, you know, two, two big streams. You know, one is the, the extension of where we've already been, which is to stand up for user freedom and, and user choice and, you know, at the core technologies that people interface with the web. So certainly that continues to be the browser and the tools that people use to make websites, but it's also really around identity, where are your accounts, where are your friends stored, and, you know, making sure that stuff doesn't end up in siloed, centralized places, but that you keep control of that data. And similarly, I think that we want to make sure that mobile and the world of apps, which is emerging around us, is still built on the kinds of standards that the web is built on. So Mozilla is very focused on those things, which is you know, using the same army of, of creative technologists we've always used uh, and getting out there in the market and playing for the, the forces of good on the web. But the other side of it is making sure that in whatever world you work every day, that you think about both what the web has to, to offer your own creativity and, and uh, vision, but also that what you do and how you innovate in your world helps the web. And so we see that in what we're doing with education. Some of this alternative uh, assessment and accreditation stuff, we see it actually potentially as a lever to help solve some of these identity problems by making sure that where people put their educational accreditation is tied to open identity systems. Similarly, we want to go out and talk to people in the world of media, the world of science, artists, you know, how can they, as they tap into the creative potential of the web, make the right choices that on a massive and leveraged scale actually help the web stay free and open for the long term. And that's, you know, that's what Mozilla wants to be working on for the, the next, I don't know, five or 50 or 100 years. How can people get involved? Just, uh, you know, the best thing to do is go to mozilla.org or go to drumbeat.org, which is a, a part of Mozilla, and there's lots of ways there. Thanks a lot, uh, Mark, and keep up the great work. Awesome. Always a, a good time, Howard.